a surprise discount. What are the top five? Look at the top five. It might explain 70% of the price discovery. What is the implication for you as investors? Well, invest on those, only in those five stocks where the price discovery says making up the bulk uh, of the pricing mechanism in the market. Right? So we are now trying to introduce that in the Islamic finance thing. Uh, and we'll, we haven't got any results yet. It's going to take us some time. So that's the ongoing work. And of course, we are developing other econometric models, uh, which is at the theory stage, uh, but later we'll be able to apply it to Islamic finance. So that's about my work on Islamic finance. And I'm happy to take questions, clarifications. So thank you. Yes. <coughs> Yeah, from here. Is, do you have a mic? Yeah. Right, well, thank you very much uh, for this very wonderful uh, presentation. Uh, I have a lot of questions, but can you take me back? I, I can't. I can't hear you. I thank you for the presentation. Um, and I was wondering if you could please uh, go to um, the um, project you had, um, the, the second project where you had the rates of returns. Um, you know, you had the rates of returns on there. I don't know which one that was. The table you mean? No, not that table. I think, you know, where you ran. Uh, this one? No, further, I think. Yeah, 14% and 17% and all of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Right. I, I have some questions about this, but let me just ask one on this uh, particular table. Yeah. You were saying that you, uh, basically, you assumed uh, mean variance utility, right? Did you do that with the, with this set of data as well? Uh, no, this is momentum trading strategy. Okay. So that's M. Uh, M stands okay. for momentum, momentum right. profits. Yeah. So I this is Jagdish and Tittman. Yes. So I, I was wondering whether or not that um, the fact that the smaller size portfolio gives you a higher return, uh -huh. whether that is somewhat counterintuitive with portfolio theory. This is one question. Then the, on the last part, on your new model. As you know that um, basically um, trying to find um, price discovery through econometrics raises quite a few implications for the law of one price. And I wonder if this new model that you have worked up, it seems to me like it would have much better facility, it sounds like, I don't know very much about it, much better facility to show the implications for the law of one price in terms of efficiency of markets. I wonder if you'll comment on that. Mm. OK, uh, thanks. Good, good questions, uh, both of them. One is with regards to this profits here. Um, you see, when you look at the traditional literature on size effects, there's a special issue in 1980 published by the General of Financial Economics. That's where the size story started. And the finding there was that uh, at least the consensus 
seemed, although some of the papers had mixed evidence, the consensus seemed to suggest that investing in small size stocks, not from a profitability point of view, they didn't do anything of this sort, but you know, investing in small size stocks are uh, likely to give you better returns. And you know, that analysis was very simple. Uh, just looking at the <coughs> average returns in a descriptive statistics story, right? Nothing to do with any profitability. So this, what we find is that the smallest size amongst the size portfolios gives you the most profits. Seems to be, you know, connecting with that with that group of studies published you know, 30 years ago. Although that was based on you know a very descriptive story. So this, in in uh, at least that is the way we try to explain this without. Uh, without look, going, you know, into too much, uh, too much details about trying to explain why uh, a particular size portfolio is performing better than the others. Having said that, what we do later, as I said, is we we try to look at whether this profit over time is due to the risk factors that we computed, right? And we find yes, it, it is due to the risk factors. So what it means is that with small size stocks, and at least this is what the argument we come up with. The investments that you are making uh, and the profits that you are getting in return is, is purely due to the risk that you are taking, the market risk. That is there. And that's the way we explain that. With respect to your uh, the second question on this new model on price discovery, I fully agree. And that's that's where uh, the, the, the idea there is to be able to get efficient results. The idea would be, and that's why I gave the example of Coca-Cola. You need to have a commodity or, or, or an asset uh, that is homogeneous uh, in trading, right? For 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 you to make sense of uh, of of the price discovery process. Now, in relating that the 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 sensible uh, composition of your panel in this case, uh, the example I gave of the 188 stocks might not necessarily be the most sensible, although it is Islamic stocks of Asia Pacific. So there is an homogeneity aspect there. How? Well, it is Asia Pacific stocks, one. Two, it is Islamic stocks. But it may not be perfect, as you are saying. So what we could then do, because we have got these smaller portfolios like size, so what we could do is we could take the 20 stocks that are in the smaller size. So instead of having a panel of 188 stocks, you could have a panel of 20 stocks. And you would call that panel small-sized say, portfolio of stocks. So amongst what it will then do the model, amongst the 20 stocks that are in this small size uh, panel, it will tell us where exactly which of those 20 stocks is leading the price discovery process. We could do it same way with the with the uh, with the portfolio of volatility stocks. Right. So instead of what I'm trying to say is instead of running a price discovery model based on 188 stocks, you can run more homogeneous, those sort of portfolios that we have created, high trading volume, low trading volume, uh, large size, small size, uh, low book to market, high book to market. So instead of having 188, you have about 20, 25. Right? So you, we, can, we can do all those things and see at least the robustness of, of, the, of, of, of the findings. So yeah, so th those things will need to be tested. And I guess as as, as people uh, begin to uh, apply these models, they would come up with more and more better and more suitable applications that would make relatively more sense. Our idea here is simply, or will be, to simply demonstrate how you can use a, a, a price discovery model where you are faced with multiple uh, 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 stocks. So that, that's the idea. Okay. Thanks. You, you can sit down. We will be very comfortable. It's fine. It's fine. Uh, thank you very much for your enlightening talk. Uh, I just have uh, one question about these Islamic stocks. Like, how do you define Islamic stocks? Uh, I am asking this question due to two reasons. One is that uh, the first time this Islamic indices thing came up is 1999, whereas your data goes back to 1980 or 1974. Second thing is, uh, even in that index, uh, or the indices in Malaysia or in these countries, uh, the, the constituents tend to change. Islamic stocks tend to become non-Islamic, and non-Islamic stocks tend to become Islamic. 
So many studies uh, have faced this problem. So how did you get rid of these, these problems? Yeah. Very important point, and we we make the you know in the very first opportunity in the paper we explain those things in detail the the data aspect, right? So uh, first thing is those stocks that change uh, from being Islamic to non-Islamic and vice versa they are not included in 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 our uh, selection of sample stocks simply because if you were to include it then you'll have to shorten your sample size, right? And our idea was to have the longest time period possible. So those stocks are dropped. Um, in terms of uh, how we define, well, we don't define. It's, it's as given in the, in the, so we use the Dow Jones uh, or, or the S&P 500 defined uh, Islamic stocks. The way they do it is they have, from memory, they have a Sharia compliant uh, board uh, which then uh, looks at all the stocks. So, for example, if you wanted your stock to be classified as Sharia compliant, you'll have to apply to this board and it looks into the compliance issues. Uh, and I think there are some percentages of that, like 30% or something something like that. So all those criteria is, is used by this, uh, uh, what do you call this, this, this governing uh, board, Islamic board that looks after uh, all that. So we, we, we have looked. Yes. Yeah. See, my question is like before 1999, these yes. stocks might not be Islamic. Mm -hmm. That's the, so how did you? Like, yeah. Did you calculate these ratios for 19 until 1900? That's right. So using those same criteria, okay. using the same same criteria was used to select all those stocks. Okay. So those stocks. That's why we end up with in uh, like, let's say uh, with the uh, uh, the New York Stock Exchange and the Nasdaq. If you look at the non-Islamic stocks, there's about 6,000 that we use. The Islamic stocks, we could only, when we do the filtering, we end up with 532 something. Right? Although there are, if you look at now, there are thousands of Islamic stocks. Right? But when you apply the filter, all those stocks will drop out. Okay? Simply because they don't meet that uh, criteria. Uh, 